you can think of the Android camera to APIs, but like a Russian Rubik cube. In R1, first of all, we had to pull out the camera manager, then get the camera ID, and now we have the camera device. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. In the previous tutorial, we learnt about creating the dimensions, width and height dimensions for our preview part of our camera application, uh, the preview that would be used for the surface. Now we're going to create a camera device. Um, in the previous tutorial, we learnt um, using the camera manager how to get the different camera IDs which represented each camera in our device. In this one we're going to be actually setting up the camera device itself which provides additional functionality for setting up requests and creating sessions. Anyway, we'll make a start on setting up the camera device. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a couple more members. One will be for the camera device itself. Let's call it M camera device. Another one's going to be a state callback listener for that camera device. Uh, let's just call it, um, I'm going to make these names quite long, but at least it'll make it clear to what these members are. Okay, and create a new object of this state device. Okay. Like that. Right, as you can see here with our camera device state callback, it provides to us um, the different states that the camera device will be in. Whether the camera is open, available for use, whether that camera is gets disconnected, or if we have an error with trying to use the camera device. Okay, so now I've got my two members, camera device and camera device state callback. I'm now going to open the camera. And if we go back up into the surface texture available, if the surface texture, texture is available, it's a good position, a uh, good location for me to actually um, open up the camera itself. So I'm just going to create a um, method called open camera. A nice simple method. And at the bottom, I'll set it up. Okay, the first thing I want to do is to get a, um, a camera manager object just like we did before in the last tutorial. It's set up the exactly the same way, we need to cast it. And we need to pass it the camera name from context. Camera service. Okay, since we're going to be accessing camera functionality, we need to put a protection harness around it. Okay, now, now we can actually make a call to open the camera. 
So we use our camera manager for that. And open camera. Now from the previous tutorial, we have created a, a member to hold the camera ID. Hopefully it's... Now we need to call the callback, um, the camera device state callback function a method we just implemented before. So, and I'm just going to have this running on the UI thread here. I'm not setting up any additional threads. For me, that would be more of a performance optimization task itself. So I'm just quickly just going to make this null. Okay, and basically, once we start up here, we go back into here, if everything is successful, we will be in the open state. So let me just add a toast here, just to sig signify that we've um, successfully opened the camera. short oh and we need to show the toast We've got an M camera device and we assign that to camera and we might as well populate these two other methods as well so if it's disconnected we can close the camera, call close on the camera, and we can also set our camera device to null, gracefully closing everything down. If we just copy that and go to this line, we'll do the same for error as well just to gracefully close down and release our resources related to the camera. Okay. At this stage, this is all I want to do. We've now successfully created a camera device object and that gives us implementation for creating the camera requests which are needed for camera sessions. Okay, let's try running this and see what happens. Okay, we've had an error here and it says lacking, lacking privileges. Okay, so we're going to have to set up a permission here, which is good. So permissions are kept in Android manifest. Okay, two things here. Let me go to the uh, documentation for this. So in this location here, we've got the documentation for the camera too. Um, to use camera, to use any hardware, I need permissions for that. Um, so let me just go to my Android Studio and we'll add a permission for this. Very similar to storage. Here we go, camera. Close that. So we do need permission to use the camera as a hardware. Let's also go back to documentation and let me find camera device. So this is what we've just created here. And notice if down here, if your application requires full level device for proper operation, declare Android hardware camera to full. So 
I think I want that. I think I want to do lots of stuff with this camera. So I'm going to go for the full. So I'm going to use this feature full. So Android ha hardware camera too. So go back into here and we're going to use add a user's feature as well. Oh. So what was it? Android hardware camera two dot full, I believe. We can double check that. So Android hardware camera two full. Okay, so I want all the full features that the camera device will give me. Of course, want everything. Okay, so we'll save that and let's re go. Let's go back into the activity and let's rerun that again. Okay, it was way too fast. I did get the camera, I did get the toast open. We'll debug that anyway. So I'll just record the screen. Okay, you still can't see very much, but I saw the toast pop up uh, momentarily to signify that we, we did have the... Um, we had created the camera device successfully. Um, we'll show that in the uh, debug portion of this tutorial. So we have successfully created our camera device, which is required, as I mentioned before, for creating camera requests, which I need for camera sessions. Okay, I'll just stop recording. Okay, as with these tutorials, I'm just gonna add some breakpoints and step through the code that we set up. So if I can just go to open camera first. Put a breakpoint here when we open the camera. And we'll go into the state callback. And let's just put a breakpoint in each one of these. Um, my reasoning for this, if something does go wrong, if I get an error or on disconnect, I want to sort of see when that happens as well, just in case that happens. So, good idea to put a breakpoint, especially initially during development. And we can put a breakpoint here for when our surface texture is available. Okay, now let's run debug. Okay, application started up, we've had our first breakpoint. We're gonna open the camera. Okay, we're in the open camera method. Now we're actually gonna open the camera with the camera ID. We set that up from the previous tutorial. And with the device state callback, those are the two arguments you need for this method. Let's continue executing. Okay, so that's successful. We didn't get an error, we got on open, so that's successful. So, and when on open method is called, we get a camera device and we're gonna assign that to our camera device member. Okay, the next step down here was just to create a toast and I can show you here, oh, somehow and press, where's execute? just to show you the toast popping up at the bottom there, above the button. Okay, so at, okay, so we've now successfully um, created our camera device. I'm gonna stop the tutorial here because we're gonna move on to further sections that are sort of enclosed in their own subject type. So this is a good stage to stop. Um, okay, from this tutorial, we just basically learned how to create a camera device. It gets created when you open the camera and you do have to create a camera device state callback. Just in case the camera doesn't 
open successfully, you will get an on error method called back as well. So you want to be able to track any potential problems you'll have there as well. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoy my tutorials, subscribe. That's all for this one. Bye for now. Okay, what do we have here? We actually have a working preview using our back facing camera. Don't want to show you too much of my messy little office studio.